G'day, how you going? Ian Annapolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video today. Um, this one's going to be the waterfall. So we're going to put a waterfall together on acrylic. There's the size of the canvas panel that I'm using. And I'll pull to the side so you can see some colours going up the screen there. And you can pause it, write them down so you can play and paint along with this video and be sure to share like and subscribe in the bottom right hand corner there all right so we've got a um, canvas board here i'll get some gloves on so as i can protect my hands and we'll get going all right i'm going to use some flowing white paint with some retarder there so as the board can be oh you know what i want to do Instead of that, I'm going to add the blue just a little bit. We want this, see how much blue I put in there? Not much at all. Because we don't want it to be white now, we want it to be blue. Now, I'm going to give this a light mist of water. Just where I'm going to put my sky. So I want to crisscross this. Get it all here. See how pale that is? I wanted it nice baby blue, pale, virtually white if anything. Look at that. That's all right, that'll be... Okay, well... There we go, I'm happy with that. We've got a nice pale blue sky. We've got that phalo blue mixed in with that flowing white it just saved me putting the flowing white on and then putting the blue on again over that now down here i've got a green this green is an antique green or it's called green gray i'll give it a little bit of water because this is gonna mist into the sky so i pretty much want to work out where i'm going to put this like so If anything, I want to come up this way. I'm going to grab a blending brush and I want to, I'm, I'm stamping at the moment, I'm stamping that into the sky color there. And then I want to blend it into there just so it's blending in. See what's happening? This can come back out here. This doesn't have to blend so much, but we'll still blend it. It's the sky side we want blended the most. Now we want to put a bit more up there. Get a bit more going up here somewhere. Around here, so to speak. That'll do. And I want to blend that into the sky as well. There we go. And then we'll put some mist on the sky and follow back over this. Okay. I'm going to let that wear out there like so. Now back down onto our palette here. I'm grabbing some titanium white out of the tube. And that's going to be our fog. So I'll grab another fan brush just to laden that onto the um, canvas there. So I want to pick up this. Now I want to start in this corner and get it on, stamp it on, pick up more, stamp it on and start feathering it down into this green where I want it to sort of be misty now if you look at that white we've put on there it's a good quality titanium white out of the tube but have a look it's quite stipulate stip, stippled and thick and textured so I'm going to grab my blending brush and I'm going to stamp it just so I'm stamping everywhere dabbing it down this is a synthetic two inch brush I'm using to blend and the hairs at the end of it are even softer again they're really soft they're not scratchy so I've done that okay got rid of all the big heavy blobs now I'm going to wipe the brush 
And I want to gently merge that into that green grey slash antique grey, okay? And it doesn't matter if the grey comes back into that as well. But what I'm trying to create is a distant with fog in that corner of the picture, okay? So we're going to manipulate this till we get it the way we want. Making sure we've got the green going back. We don't want to touch here and then come here and do big ugly white things like that. Alright? That's why it pays to practice some blending. And we're going to bring this sky so now we'll just dab a bit of sky there. Blend it in. We've got tint of blue in there. Get that green all blended up. Alright, this blue is going to get covered up eventually. We've got our green fading into some white. Now I'm going to pick up that antique green again on my fan brush. Because I want to get some sort of trees out here now. So we're going to put some, these are distant ones. Maybe a big one here and something here. They're just in front of that other stuff. Okay. And we want to lightly bring something here as well. I want to get some more in here. So I'm going to grab some white. I'll grab a bit more over here that I can dirty. And I just want to lighten that down a bit. So as they're further away to what we're doing. Just so in here we can put some distant ones there. The camera might not pick this up but I can certainly see them. something up here and then we'll put the this color that I was doing we'll put that back on see some of this over that white there will show up there we go it's just subtly disappearing behind the mist all right now we'll continue with some of this just there Lightly getting up there, maybe some there. Just sitting those first light coloured ones back. There we go. And we'll put some kind of, you know, distinct branches on them so they look like trees out there, like some sort of evergreen or whatever the... Um, mountains have out that way in the Canada or America the West Coast Trail this was from now Bill Higgins had a video on his um, war there a friend of mine and I asked if I can do a painting from a still from it and he says yeah absolutely knock yourself out so that's what we're doing today we've just got some distant trees there anyway we can keep mucking around like that to cows and all sorts of animals come home, but we're getting there. I probably want a little bit just over here. So if that's going to come up there, just something light back there as well. Some sort of distant trees, these are. Back down on my palette, I've got some forest green. So we're going to get this onto a fan brush. I think I had the camera off when I thought it was on. So I've just got the forest green and I've scratched up the canvas like that and put some darker gr trees in front of the antique green. And I've dried that now and I'm getting some black. I haven't cleaned that brush, but I'm just getting some black onto it. And I want to get this darker here and 
sort of scratched up into that green as well just giving it some darker values back in from here and dribbling into that forest green that I've put on okay well, I'm working in layers here so you can see the depth that it's creating just pockets of it here and there don't do a big black dark band all the way around just sort of I'm got to try and find the pieces where I feel it's going to need shadow and that's all I'm doing here scratching some up in a in a broken up but um, all over the place type of way just so I've got some shadow there now I'll keep the black and I want to get this blocked in now so I want to have some up here coming off the painting down there I'll use a different brush so I want to come off the painting down here and if anything that's going to be a ridge there this is coming all the way across of course so I'll get all that tazzled up into that black shadow that I got there I don't want to go too thick back into there this is going to make the depth of our rock and waterfall. Okay, we've got all that blacked in and I'm just merging the black to the bottom shadow of these trees here. Now I'll dry that black so everything will stick to it properly. Okay, how you doing there? All caught up? Having fun? Having your coffee? Relaxing? So now we want to, we've got the main dark colours on there. Now we want to start putting the highlights where they need to go and get that rock colour on there to make everything look like a picture now. Now I'm grabbing the forest green again and we want to, like, I've got some, not too much there. I want to get bits riding up this bit of a hill here. Just give it some dark values. Make sure that forest green that you're using has got a bit of water on it so it's going to come off your brush reasonably well because we want something coming down this side just tracing in front of the rocks there, okay? Just like that. And also something on the top of the mound there, just like that. And we've also got to get some of the, um, we want big stuff coming down here within the rocks coming up. So if anything, I'm doing a round bit coming around and hanging down. Okay. Leaving some of the shadow there. Coming around and down. That's what I'm trying to achieve here and get some more bits happening here. Let me have a look in my monitor. That's not too bad. I'll just wet the paint a little bit more. Now we've also got some running up here and then the, the highlights are going to distinguish out of this what's in front and what's behind everything, okay? So this is just all shrubbery over rocks and stuff. How's that looking? I think that black bit there is a bit too black. We'll get some more green there maybe. That's not too bad. I'm not too careful how this is ending up. Like it's the highlight that I want to put from this that's got to have the right shape to it. This is sort of the second base coat. All right, we'll get back down here. Now, I'm just using, I'm just finding a couple of brushes, a flathead brushes, different ends to them, a little fan brush, something you can get some scenery happening out of. And we're going to go for the sap green now. We're getting that on our brush. And I'll start from, let's say, over here. And I want to get the shape of this happening the way I want. So I'm getting it on the edge of my brush. And I want some sort of umbrellary bits coming down 
I don't know, just something like that. But very broken up. Be careful how you do it. Break it up a bit. There. That'll do. Because this is going to have a bit of yellow green on it. And now this is sort of scattering. It's going past there, which is sinking that back. And this is sort of scattering down this rock here. Really very lin minimal. Don't put too much there, okay? Some of it there. And then these are sort of there like that. How's that looking in my monitor? It's not too bad. Now this is this colour here is the one where you want to make sure things are sitting back. So I want to try and get something in these evergreens or whatever they were. Just minimal. Minimal. I'm not bringing this colour right down to the bottom because I want the shadow to hold its place there. That's not too bad. It's working out all right. And then we've got some... Now, we're going to put shrubs in front of that or like... It's just bushes up there. This is... But I'm keeping this dark in between. Okay, see that? It's just like big shrubbery and stuff. So we've got something coming down there. And then we've got a beautiful big amount in front of that. Which is going to dribble off our waterfall. Our waterfall is going to be here, believe it or not. That's the way I want this to go. And over here, this big bit that we had, we want to highlight that now. So we're going to sort of bring this down over those rocks. How's that looking? Beautiful. Just the way it was intended. The forest green is under here. You can't probably work out how or how it's working, but it's it's doing its thing there, okay? And then we got some more cascading over the rocks and sideways and all sorts gibbering up there. And then we're just going to slowly highlight this with the touch of a yellow green, but I want to do that after I put the water in. So you can see what we've got going on here now, okay? Get some darkness up in there. I've lost a bit of dark right there. You can always put them back. Remember, I've told you in other videos, if you lost your darkness, put it back. Okay, let's start attacking the bottom of the canvas here before we go any more. I've got this flat two-inch brush. I've dampened it. I'm just picking up some of the black. Sorry, I had the camera still pointing at my easel. So I've just coloured all this black in here, okay? And we're going to dry that now. Now I've mixed up my raw umber and black, okay? Now over here, we've just got it, some of it laced in white. Not too bright, but just enough. Because I want to make the waterfall now. And also, the grass can be shaped back on top of it. So we're making the tight top edge there. And we want something down like that. Let it let this all break up. This is going to be rock. And we want some more, let's say there sort of there. We've got to try and make some rock here. And we'll probably put some dark aspects in it as well. So we're coming off the side there to get the... See how that's bright? I don't want it that bright, so I'm going to mix it on my brush a bit more so that doesn't happen. And we're sort of scattering it across here because I want a bit of a ledge on my waterfall, which is going to be about here. So I'm keeping it horizontal, just like that. I've got the top nice and sharp the way I want it. And we're just going to simply get this broken up, widged up in there, because all that's rock there. We can come back when we highlight the bush over all this. So we're just sort of giving it some rock. There we go. 
Now we want to come around here. I want to sort of have some darkness. We're a little bit more white into that. I'm just adding a little bit more white. And trying to make some different rocks here and there. Like a, I'm imagining I've got one in front here. So I'm just, and I've got to keep some darkness, but I'm, I feel I might have to replace some of the darkness back. Okay, we're still going along. Just, this is going to have a water. This is pretty much the base of it here. And we want to get that rock wedged up in there. Turn your brush around if you need to. It's going to be the bottom there. How's that? I think something's missing here, yeah. We need to put something here. I'm just going to hope for the best. Brush it around and make whatever like that. This side here, I want to feather it in there. So we've got some, some type of rock with underneath... there so when we lace all the stuff in front it's going to sit it back beautifully and then you'll see how the picture's coming alive so it pays to watch a video first if you're going to paint from it to work out just what's up ahead what's up ahead in store for you so you'll know there we go i'm just sort of scrumbling it getting it up in there where i want the rocks to be now that colour, I would like to get a bit more white just to highlight some of what we just put on there. And this is sort of going to put things... Well, I want that on the brush and then wiped off. I should have dried it. You could dry that base colour first. This is going to add... See, it's just adding bits of um, big shadow values and whatnot to your rock. This is the light hitting the surface of it. Okay, that's looking like rock. Yeah, I think it is. I'm pretty happy with that. Get a lot of it all. I don't know. A reference picture helps. We just want to make some... You know how rocks sort of have slices and that into them? That's what I'm trying to create there. bit of a light area here where the top light's hitting it and we're just virtually doing this probably over here as well see I've put it on the brush and I've wiped the brush you don't want a big big solid blurs here and before I put the water on I will um, add probably some darker values back if I feel I've lost them. Okay. That's like that. How's that looking in? Yeah, this here looks a bit dumb, doesn't it? I'll get that up. I can just sink that back with that darker colour. Just so as it... Yeah. So you got to play with it. There we go. Now I've just mixed up some Van Dyke brown and some white because I want to get um, this sort of colour here coming up. These rocks here are sort of changing colour so the face of them I'll get that brush off there a bit. I'm trying to create the boulder within the cliff face if you know what I mean. This rock is pretty much a different colour to this rock, if you know what I mean. Now going back to the raw umber and the, the black mixed with some white, we use this 
Oh, well, I want to use this just to put the darker shadows within there, not killing too much of that. And then when I sit the green over it, it's going to give me what I'm looking for. Because now, this is the ground, pretty much the stone ground cover here. And I want to virtually come all the way from about here. I'll let that scrumble up into there. And we can put things in front and behind with highlights to sink things back. And I pretty much want maybe the the waterfall, maybe where are we? Have a bit of a shore there. And just come off there like that. Now here I'm just kind of putting different colours randomly just to break up some of this stone let's just say on along here and then we'll give it some lighter values like over here we can put stuff now bits of stuff that's highlighted over in the distance I might use that little scenery brush thing that I've got just so it'll yeah how's that looking that's looking all right that's doing what I need it to do get some not too much just bits here and there bits here and there I hope I'm talking loud enough I want them longer not like that I'll fix that up there later the water's going to be last or pretty much near the last stage now I'm just grabbing the Van Dyke brown with that scenery brush and dotting in overall here within all that ground surface there just so as it's Looks like stones and something. Now we'll just get some water running down and finish it. Before we add the water, like I said, if we've lost some of the darks, I'm, that's what I'm doing now. I'm putting some dark up here because I want some water coming down over that. So I want the water to be pretty much highlighted by what's going to happen. I just want some darker values back in. I'm just sort of detailing the shadow, so to speak, okay? See what it's doing? And some of this can detail back merging those two colory areas together, but they've got the same shadow. What's that doing? Yes, 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 that's doing it. Get some shadow in there. And in the rock, we probably need some more shadow in here just to give it that sense of realism or, you know, what we like, that bullshit effect looks great now I've just finished mucking around putting black and you know d detailing all that sort of stuff I want to get the water on now so I'm going to use a flathead brush and got some titanium white with some water just to make it flow a bit now if you want you could probably dirty that white you've just put on there just contaminate it with some of that blue okay just so it's not full white get your brush conditioned like that and we'll work out where we want some water now so I want some water sort of well let's hope I don't ruin that I want I'm going to start from this side so I want some water sort of dribbling down here just going into nothing there how's that looking that looks like water it could have been a bit more scratchy more misty now I want to get a bit here and sort of come down so what I'll do like that see that's just looking like water coming down the the rock I want to come down to sort of here that point because what I want to do is have it <coughs> stab it like that don't make it too violent and just have this coming down 
Yeah, like that. Is that looking? Yeah, it's just looking like water coming down the rocks, okay? So we'll get a bit, just sort of, just an edge there, just like that, okay? And we're going to play with this all the way across. So we're going to come to this side. Probably want a little bit in front of that black bit there. How's that? Yep, beautiful. So water's there. Now look, I've got a low bit there. That's where I've made all this. It's all come off the low bit. Don't go putting it up here now. Let's find the next low bit. Try and make the, the picture look like makes sense so we'll get a bit more maybe just dribbling down here like that and it's sort of hitting the rocks like that like that and it's coming into the water here and we'll get that Water's just got, we could probably get something else just veining down there, some more water. Like that, you see. That's it. And where's that dark bit I put there? There it is. I just want a bit running down here. Coming down. just behind there okay like that now we'll get the the bottom here we'll get it here sorted so you don't want to go too violent it's not a big massive one we just want to sort of hang on, get rid of some of that off my brush I could have came down into the lake a bit more here okay there we go now we just want to like this I have seen some people, it, it's, it's, it's just a problem, it's not a problem, but it's just something you don't need to do. They do a little waterfall, but the turbulence underneath is so violent, it's a lot like the Niagara Fall. I mean, it's got enough there, but we're trying to do it in perspective. Now, I want to wipe my brush just to make that a bit more... Mist, hang on, condition the edge of the brush, like shape it under the... And I want to sort of, if I can, get some real fluffy, misty edges on that water, scooting out there like that, just on that bit that I put at the bottom. Okay. Then we can put our reflection. So we've got something sort of... coming this way there's that reflection and we want sort of that reflection how's that looking yep and some of all this we're just breaking it up and I can use that darker color to put the darker values back if I've done too much of it. That's looking like it. Go like this and just get that pulled. I might have to pick up some of the darker colour. So I'll wet that brush a bit more. Because it's a reactive paint, it's an interactive paint. There we go. We've just got the reflection in there. I've just picked up the pure white titanium on my brush and I want to now put some of this where are we get out my head out the way just detail this water a bit more just like that How's that looking? That's looking all right. And we'll get the actual splashes back from where we did the um, the misty bit, just like that. So you've got different values of white there, 
see it's just a bit turbulent here hopefully we can make it just the right amount of turbulence okay that'll do and then I, I want to I'm gonna just wipe the brush onto the canvas easel there and under here I want to get some sort of lighter water values kissing against this rock that's in the lake here just so it looks a bit real not floating get you walking around there like that and we could probably put some leave a bit of black just there like that just so the water's got a surface how's that looking in my oh yeah that's looking all right now let's put a surface on the water the trick is where are we that's sort of coming up in there a bit that's looking all right now we're going to do this is that working yeah we're sort of putting scallopy letter eights on the side like that and we can keep going backwards and forwards with the lighter the darker the lighter the darker whatever's making it too much see how that's done and over here is pretty much I don't want to do too much here I want to keep a nice dark value there somewhere as well just so we got like the surface of the water there see now what I can do is like I'll, I'll just show you I'm picking up the darker watercolor and see here I can rub out the bits that I think that I've done too much on simple all right let me see I'll look in the monitor and do this I like looking into my monitor gives me an idea of what to do probably lost me reflection but we can intensify that not a problem just like that yeah that's intensified it a bit more now just to finish it off we're going to pick up the yellow green on my little scenery brush and we've got to put the trees and everything now in we're going to bring them to life so we pretty much got where are we we can put some sort of this let me just see yep that'll do I want some of this in front of that tree there I want some of it just on the tops of all here coming down there yep some just on the tops there tracing down want the tops of this branches like highlighted from the light up the top and some of this tracing down over the rock in front of that dark area there now try not to do this too much you can get carried away I've got carried away I've ruined up the whole painting sometimes so we'll just put bits here and there leaving the darkest values are important leave them there all over the top here now this is behind the waterfall yeah that's it that's that's it that's it so I want to bring that down and over here so it looks like it's behind the rocks the rocks have got shape and dimension to them you see and you can see what's happened in this painting we've put things in front and behind so get all this I don't know what it is it's just like clovers or moss or uh, coverage just growing over the rock and it's just tracing down in the very littlest where are we we'll get some over the rock so you can see what I mean into the dark areas there dark areas there I like this little brush it does good 
scenery for me. Make yourself some brushes worn and torn and if you think they're going to work for you. There we go. Look at that. Too easy, wasn't it? Alrighty, everything is dry. I've just got some white on that brush and I'm going to wipe it now. Let's hope there's no other yellow. Because I want to bring this mist from the sky just over the ground a bit and over here as well in this corner. Just bleed it back up into there and bring it down over the ground there. It's just something I wanted to do. And if you want, you could probably bring some in front of the trees if it's going to work. Is that going to work? I don't want to kill the flavour of the sky there. Oh, I think I'll just leave that. See, I'm mucking around with things. Look at that. But it's kind of putting the mist there. And we can put a frame on it as well. So I'll just give it the most tiniest little Ian Harris signature. And we'll put my frame on top of that just to see how this scenery looks. This should look good in a frame. There you go. That's not too shabby. We've just got a waterfall coming over some rocks going into a lake. And we've got the misty sky over there as well in the background. Yeah, I want to thank a Facebook friend of mine, Bill Higgins. He put a video up and I saw this in the video there. And it looked good. So I've used the layout for the design of my waterfall for this tutorial, okay? I just wanted to have a design. I'd like to thank Bill Higginson for letting me use a snippet out of his video there to get the layout of my waterfall today. All right, I hope you enjoyed this. If you like what I've done, tell your friends, but if you don't, you better tell everybody, all right? Goodbye, good luck, and good on ya.